Hello all, welcome to this video on matrix decompositions. Today I will be discussing about the topics determinants and trace. Determinants are important concepts in linear algebra. A determinant is a mathematical object in the analysis and solution of systems of linear equations. Determinants are only defined for square matrices A belonging to the n cross n dimension space, that is, matrices with the same number of rows and columns. Throughout the discussion, we will be using the following notations to show determinant, that is, DET of A or this symbol. Determinant of A can be written in this format, where we will elaborate on all of its elements from A11 to A1n to an1 to ann. Determinant of a square matrix A is the function that maps A onto a real number. For any square matrix A, it also holds that A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is not 0. For the case where n is equal to 1, determinant of A can be written as determinant of its only element A11 which is A11. For the case where n is equal to 2, determinant of A can be written as A11 A22 minus A12 A21. For n is equal to 3, we use the Saras rule. As a result, we get the following expansion. More details on this will be seen in the following slides using examples. We call a square matrix T an upper triangular matrix if T of ij is equal to 0 for i greater than j, that is the matrix is 0 below its diagonal. Analogously, we define a lower triangular matrix as a matrix with zeros above its diagonal. For a triangular matrix T belonging to the n cross n dimension space, the determinant is the product of the diagonal elements, that is, determinant of t can be written as product from i is equal to 1 to n t of i i. Computing the determinant of an n by n matrix requires a general algorithm to solve cases for n greater than 3, which is done by computing the determinant of n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrices. By recursively applying the Laplace expansion, which we will be seeing soon, we can compute the determinants of n by n matrices ultimately by computing the determinants of 2 by 2 matrices. Now we look into determinants as measures of volume. The notion of a determinant is natural when we consider it as a mapping from a set of n vectors spanning an object in the n dimension space. It turns out that Determinant of A is the signed volume of an n-dimensional parallelepiped formed by columns of the matrix A. For the case where n is equal to 2, the columns of the matrix form a parallelogram. As the angles between the vectors get smaller, the area of the parallelogram shrinks, as you can see in the figure. Now consider the two vectors B and G that form the columns of a matrix A. Then the absolute value of the determinant of A is the area of the parallelogram with vertices 0, B, G and B plus G. In particular, if B, G are linearly dependent so that B can be written as lambda G for some lambda which is a real number, they no longer form a two-dimensional parallelogram. Therefore, the corresponding area is 0. On the contrary, if B and G are linearly independent, and are multiples of the canonical basis vectors E1, E2, they can be written as B, which is given by B0, and G, which is given by 0, G, and the determinant as BG. The sign of the determinant indicates the orientation of the spanning vectors B and G with respect to the standard basis E1, E2. This now becomes the familiar formula to find the area, which is given by height into length. This intuition extends to higher dimensions also. In a three-dimensional space, we consider three vectors R, B, G spanning the edges of a parallelepiped, a solid with faces that are parallel parallelograms. 
the absolute value of the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix is the volume of the solid. Thus, the determinant acts as a function that measures the signed volume formed by column vectors composed in a matrix. Consider the three linearly independent vectors R, G, B as given here. We will now write them as columns of a matrix A and then find its determinant using the Saras rule. For that, we need to write the first three columns followed by the first two columns which is written to its right hand side. Then we take two set of diagonals that is a set from left to right with three diagonals in it and the negative of diagonals from right to left which can be written as 2 into 1 into minus 1 plus 6 into 4 into minus 8 plus 1 into 0 into 0 minus 1 into 1 into minus 8 minus 0 into 4 into 2 minus 0 into 6 into minus 1. On reducing this, we will get the value as 186. Now we look into Laplace expansion. Consider a matrix A belonging to the n by n dimension space. Then for all j belonging to the range 1 to n, the expansion along column j can be written as determinant of a given by sigma k is equal to 1 to n minus 1 raised to k plus j. k and j are the indices of the particular element where k is the row index and j is the column index which is multiplied by the element in that particular location multiplied by the determinant of the matrix obtained when kth row and jth column are removed. Similarly, expansion along row j can be written as determinant of a given by sigma k is equal to 1 to n minus 1 raised to j plus k. Now, j is the row index and k is the column index which is multiplied by the element in that particular row and column multiplied by the determinant of the matrix a which is obtained after removing the jth row and kth column. Now we will see a problem to find the determinant of the matrix A using Laplace expansion. On applying the equation we get minus 1 raised to the indices of the first element which is 1 and 1 which gives an even number so this value is positive multiplied by the element in that particular location which is 1 multiplied by the matrix we get after removing the first row and first column which is 1 2 0 1 plus minus 1 raised to the indices of the second element which is 1 and 2 which gives an odd value so this value will be negative multiplied by the element in that particular location multiplied by the matrix we get after removing the particular row and column which is 3 2 0 1 plus minus 1 raised to the indices of the next element which is 1 and 3 which gives an even number so the value is positive multiplied by the element in that particular location which is 3 multiplied by the matrix we get after removing the corresponding row and column. Finally we will get the answer as minus 5. We will get the same answer if we apply the Saras rule here since the value of n is 3. For a matrix A belonging to the n by n dimension space, the determinant exhibits the following properties. Determinant of a matrix product is the product of the corresponding determinants. That is, determinant of A into B is given by determinant of A into determinant of B. Determinants are invariant to transposition. That is, determinant of A is equal to determinant of A transpose. If A is regular or invertible, then determinant of A inverse can be written as 1 by determinant of A. Similar matrices possess the same determinant. Therefore, for a linear mapping phi, which is defined from the vector space V to another vector space V, all the transformation matrices A phi of the linear mapping phi have the same determinant. Thus, 
determinant is invariant to the choice of basis of a linear mapping. For more details on linear mapping, you can refer to one of my previous videos on the same. Adding a multiple of a column or row to another one does not change the determinant of E. Multiplication of a column or row with lambda, which is a real number, scales the determinant of A by lambda. In particular, determinant of lambda into A can be written as lambda raised to n determinant of A. Swapping two rows or columns changes the sign of determinant of A. Because of the last three properties, we can use Gaussian elimination to compute determinant of A by bringing A into the row echelon form. We can stop Gaussian elimination when we have A in a triangular form where all the elements below the diagonal are zero. Recall that the determinant of a triangular matrix is the product of all diagonal elements. A square matrix A has determinant as non-zero if and only if the rank of the matrix is n. In other words, A is invertible if and only if it is full rank. When mathematics was mainly performed by hand, the determinant calculation was considered an essential way to analyze matrix invertibility. However, contemporary approaches in machine learning use direct numerical methods that superseded the explicit calculation of the determinant. Now we look into what a trace is. The trace of a square matrix A is defined as trace of A given by sigma i is equal to 1 to n A i i. That is, it is the sum of the diagonal elements of A. The trace satisfies the following properties. Trace of A plus B can be written as trace of A plus trace of B, where A and B belong to the n cross and dimension space. Trace of alpha A can be written as alpha into trace of A, where alpha is a real number and A belong to the n cross and dimension space. Trace of an identity matrix of dimension n is n. Trace of A into B can be written as trace of B into A. For a belonging to n cross k dimension space and b belonging to k cross n dimension space. It can be shown that only one function satisfies these four properties together which is the trace. The properties of the trace of matrix products are more general. Specifically, the trace is invariant under cyclic permutations that is trace of a into k into l is equal to trace of k into l into a. For matrices a belonging to a cross k dimension space, k belonging to k cross l dimension space and l belonging to l cross a dimension space. This property generalizes to products of an arbitrary number of matrices. As a special case, it follows that for two vectors x, y belonging to n dimension space, trace of x, y transpose can be written as trace of y transpose x, which can be written as y transpose of x, which is a real number. Given a linear mapping phi from a vector space v to another vector space v, we define the trace of this map by using the trace of matrix representation of phi. For a given basis of V, we can describe phi by means of the transformation matrix A. Then the trace of phi is the trace of A. For a different basis of V, it holds that the corresponding transformation matrix B of phi can be obtained by a basis change of the form S inverse A S for suitable S. For more details on transformation matrix, you can refer to one of my videos I have done previously on the same. For the corresponding trace of phi, this means that trace of B can be written as trace of S inverse A S, which can be written as trace of A into S into S inverse, which can be written as trace of Hence, 
While matrix representations of linear mappings are basis dependent, the trace of a linear mapping phi is independent of the basis. Now we will see what a characteristic polynomial is. For lambda, which is a real number, and a square matrix A, characteristic polynomial given by P A of lambda can be written as determinant of A minus lambda i, which can be expanded as C0 plus C1 lambda plus C2 lambda square plus etc. plus Cn minus 1 lambda n minus 1 plus minus 1 raised to n lambda raised to n. Here C0 etc. Cn minus 1 which are real numbers is the characteristic polynomial of A. In particular C0 can be written as the determinant of A and Cn minus 1 can be written as minus 1 raised to n minus 1 trace of A. The characteristic polynomial allows us to compute eigenvalues and eigenvectors. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.